Rumors are swirling that we could get GPT 4.5 as early as this week. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We start today's episode in a slightly different place than normal, which is in the realm of speculation. However, one of the interesting quirks of the Twitter slash X space right now is that there are a couple accounts that seem to have insider information on what happens next at OpenAI. The two accounts are the Jimmy Apples account, which we've talked about on the show before, and then Flowers from the Future at Futurist Flower, which only started in October, but has already built a bit of a reputation. All the way back at the end of October, on October 26th, that account had tweeted OpenAI big announcement in December, which is a fairly generic and open-ended thing. And obviously this was all before the OpenAI drama, so who knows if that would still be true. But in terms of establishing their bona fides, let's look at another tweet from October 26th, where that same account tweeted, just verified one of my sources. Gemini will come in the second week of December. As Pedro responded on December 7th, I came from the future, second week of December. This is actually true. Now, of course, one correct prediction does not mean that we should believe everything that this account says, but suffice it to say that there are a lot of people taking it seriously. And so last week, when on December 7th, that account said, some of you can look forward to a little something coming next week, a lot of people stood up and took notice. Now, they expanded on that about a day later when they wrote, Okay, so there's one big thing and one small OpenAI thingy waiting for us. The small thing is currently delayed due to company dramas, and the big thing seems to be progressing according to plan. December remains exciting, especially next week. That was tweeted on the 8th, so next week is in fact this week. That account also posted this cryptic image of a black screen with a blue ChatGPT logo in the middle. The AI Safety Memes account writes, GPT 4.5 next week? Jimmy Apples and Futurist Flower, both of whom have made some accurate leaks, are dropping gossip. Futurist Flower writes, There's one big thing and one small open AI thingy waiting for us. This is the same quote that I just read you. Now, back to AI safety memes, they continue, The big thing could be GPT 4.5. The small thing? Maybe that was the GPT store that just got delayed to 2024. Now, in the same post, they also reference a Jimmy Apples tweet. Keep an eye out on a potential end of December GPT 4.5 drop and new multimodal from Anthropic. How big of a deal would this be? I don't know. But remember, the jump from GPT-3 to GPT-3.5 was massive. Gemini might look quaint overnight. The AI Safety Memes account also shared a tweet that Jimmy Apples deleted that came out right after Gemini was launched that I had referenced on this show, where he wrote, At Sam Altman, what are you waiting for? Going to take the mitts off yet and release what you are sitting on or keep drip feeding? Cat emoji. Now, AI entrepreneur Bindu Reddy also tweeted about GPT-4.5, writing, Fascinating. Grok, in response to the prompt, what were the top AI tweets in the last two days? Grok has decided that OpenAI has released GPT-4.5. It is hallucinating, but maybe it knows something we don't know. I'm hearing juicy rumors about 4.5 dropping before end of year. Now, what Grok had come back with was a theoretical tweet from OpenAI that said, introducing GPT-4.5, the next step in our journey towards more advanced and capable AI. Stay tuned for more updates and demos. There has been some reporting recently, although it's unverified as of yet, that Grok is actually accessing draft tweets, which obviously would be a big security problem if it's true. But anyways, all of this adds up to probably nothing, but certainly some interesting speculation for a Monday morning. Is this important? Is this something you should plan around? Obviously not. Could be that we just wasted a few minutes on rampant speculation. But the reality is that right now, coming off of this Gemini announcement of an announcement, as well as the OpenAI power struggle a couple weeks ago, this is, for better or worse, something that everyone is interested in. Meanwhile, in terms of real news, the EU has finally come to agreement over the EU AI Act. Now, if you've been paying attention to this, you're probably confused around exactly how the EU lawmaking process works, because we reported a few months ago that the EU AI Act had been passed, but then there were a few remaining steps. But then it turned out those few remaining steps were very controversial, or at least had room for some controversy. And now, once again, an agreement had been reached. But as the New York Times writes, the law still needs to go through a few final steps for approval. So TLDR, this podcast is much too short to try and actually explain the European Union political process, but suffice it to say that the AI Act has moved through yet another critical step, and one which did see a fair bit of controversy and disagreement. Now, the biggest issue recently had been around what the rules would be for foundation model makers like OpenAI. A lot of the other rules, such as basically banning facial recognition AI, had been there from the beginning. Remember, the EU AI Act has been in the works for many years, in fact, longer than ChatGPT has been around. Part of the reason that there was such controversy around things like ChatGPT is that it was kind of a new addition late in the process, and there were some who wanted to punt it off entirely and basically figure it out later. Now, when it comes to those rules for foundation models, they did not end up exempting them entirely, but as Axios sums up, 
Foundation model providers will need to submit detailed summaries of the training data they use to build their models. However, Axios also writes, quote, There's a big catch in the EU's landmark new AI law, which is the fact that it doesn't come into effect until 2025, which is, of course, an eternity in terms of the development of AI systems. Again from Axios, the hiatus leaves plenty of room for the U.S. or others to undercut the EU's plans before they go into effect by, for instance, implementing less restrictive rules before Europe's kick in. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has expressed concern that EU-style laws enacted by the U.S. would put American firms at a disadvantage competing with China. Now, EU lawmakers like Thierry Breton hailed the agreement, tweeting out an image that pointed out that the EU was now the only continent with comprehensive AI regulation. Many commentators, however, noted that the EU screaming about how good at regulating it was sort of just reinforced the perception of its place as a backwater for technology. Adam Singer tweets, You hate tech and economic growth. No one takes you seriously. Along with the graph showing how few European tech companies there were relative to Asia and the US. Stephen Surges tweets, You need to understand that people want industry that works, and regulation can be required to make sure this exists. But nobody is clamoring for regulation in the absence of industry. Mike Solana writes, I am genuinely so embarrassed for you. And Rohit writes, genuinely thought this was someone making fun of the EU. Now, all of that said, there are indications that regular citizens in a lot of countries, including America, are not as universally pro-AI as the people tweeting in response to the EU might make it seem. The AI Safety Memes account again writes, a new poll dropped and wow, are Americans anti-AGI, anti-open source, and anti-effective accelerationism. Three to one want to prioritize AI safety over AI innovation. Five to one want to stop the AGI race by banning development of ASI. And five to one are opposed to EACC. Now, once again, these results do come from the AI Policy Institute, whose whole self-admitted role is to slow down the development of AI. But they're still pretty interesting statistics. The question, I think, is to what extent these numbers reflect people's considered opinions or the incredible amount of fear-based media that has been published this year around the potential risks of AI. In either case, the numbers are so stark that they're probably fairly hard to ignore. And so really the question becomes, I think, what U.S. policymakers do with all of that. One last note, for those of you who are sad that that Google demo video where it was identifying the duck and then the hand motions about what was going on ended up being faked or fabricated or at least just not exactly what it appeared, someone wired up GPT-4 Vision to see if ChatGPT-4 could do it, and sure enough, it was able to perform a little bit better. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI breakdown.